Okay, I'm uh, going to introduce uh, Yulia Panfil, who is the director of uh, Future of Land and Housing. One of the big problems uh, about uh, what happens after a war is how do you reclaim your property, particularly in the context of all the records have been destroyed. Yulia, who's actually Ukrainian-American, has been doing a lot of thinking about this, particularly in the context of Ukraine, but also other conflicts. And uh, Yulia's going to come out and uh, give us some ideas about how it's possible to restore people's property after a conflict. Yulia? Good morning, everyone. I have a quick PSA before starting. I've been asked to remind everyone of the hashtag Future Security Forum that you can tweet to. Uh, my name is Yulia Panfil, and I'm the director of the Future of Land and Housing program at the Think Tank New America. And today I would like to tell you a short story about a wicked problem that plagues countries after war and how Ukraine is innovating to solve this problem. The global property rights community is watching this very closely because what Ukraine is doing has the potential to transform how we get people back into their homes during and after war. And the problem is this. Massive displacement of people and massive destruction of homes are some of the most salient features of almost any war. That means that once a war is over, a government that is reeling from war must undertake the enormous task of getting people back into their homes and rebuilding homes that have been damaged or destroyed. This is already challenging, but what makes it particularly difficult is that the country, in the countries where we're seeing conflict occur, many people do not have deeds to their homes or other documents that they can use to prove ownership. Even when they do have property documents, those records are often destroyed or left behind in war. Not only that, it's a common tactic for belligerents to attack property registries and courts and for occupying forces to move into the homes that victims have fled. We saw this in Bosnia uh, during the um, Serbian retreat and also in Iraq. And so a post-war situation might look something like this. A small apartment building has been bombed. It has six apartments in it. Once the war is over, the government sets up a commission to figure out what the damage was to these buildings and to provide occupants with the funds to make repairs and come back home. 10 people come forward saying that they're the owners of the six apartments. None of them have proof of ownership. Now what do you do? The result is that it can take many years and sometimes decades to sort out this mess. And all the while, the longer the instability drags out, the more precious resources the country is dedicating to temporary housing and the more likely the government is to experience renewed instability. But Ukraine is doing something dramatically different. It has rolled out a smartphone-based system that allows Ukrainians to report property damage, receive compensation, and move back home, all while the war is ongoing. The program is called eRecovery, and I'll talk about it in a second, but it didn't emerge out of the blue. eRecovery is a feature of Ukraine's e-government platform called DIA, and it's the existence of DIA that I think is so important to understand. And that's what paved the way for e-recovery. You see, when President Zelensky began his tenure, he set out a vision for Ukraine as a state in a smartphone. He wanted to put public services 100% online and for Ukrainians to be able to receive those services through those smartphones. And so in 2019, Ukraine's Ministry of Digital Transformation launched an e-government app called DIA. DIA means action in Ukrainian. Ukraine became the first country in the world to fully legalize digital passports, which Ukrainians keep in their DIA app. And today, more than half of Ukrainians use DIA on a daily basis for everything from paying their taxes and parking tickets to receiving their pensions. And so, in the first two weeks after Russia's invasion in 2022, Ukraine added a new portal on DIA focused on property damage. Tens of thousands of Ukrainians rushed in those first months to register claims of homes that had been damaged or destroyed. Those claims were tied to the claimants' digital IDs, which were already in DIA, and also about half the claims were able to be tied to the property registry because DIA is interoperable with the property registry. 
Concurrently, the Ukrainian government developed the larger e-recovery program, which put in place the legal process for taking those claims that had already been filed, evaluating them, and paying out the compensation via special e-recovery bank cards. E-recovery launched in summer of 2023, and you can see the numbers. The scale is truly unprecedented. The program's innovations are fivefold and provide a preliminary blueprint for other regions of the world looking to assist victims who have lost their homes, be that through war or through natural disaster. First, claimants can file from anywhere, anytime. So this reduces the risk of setting up a brick and mortar operation in the midst of a war zone. Second, relying on a digital first process allows the government to quickly modify the app in response to user concerns, legislative progress, and changing realities. And we've seen this happen multiple times already during the first year of eRecovery's existence. Third, because the program relies on DIA, which is a pre-existing platform that many Ukrainians know and trust for other transactions, there's a baked in understanding and a recognition that the system works. So there's a trust element. Fourth, if managed effectively, a digital first process can minimize opportunities for corruption and improve transparency of how claims are processed, which is critical. But fifth, and most importantly, the program is actually getting Ukrainians back into their homes right now. So back to the wicked problem. By adjudicating these claims quickly, e-recovery reduces the risk that property records and other pieces of evidence are lost or destroyed or that an abandoned home is occupied by anyone other than the rightful owner. It also reduces the risk that tens of thousands of Ukrainians freeze to death while spending winters in makeshift tents, as is common during other conflicts or disasters. I'll end with this. E-recovery certainly isn't perfect, and of course, but Ukraine's crisis response demonstrates that um, investing in digital public infrastructure up front can pay huge dividends in, in moments of major upheaval. At their best, digital systems like DIA make governments more resilient to a range of shocks and changes and offer rapid, transparent, and equitable support to citizens at the most critical moments. Thank you.